Gosh, I'm sorry you folks missed the uh, the opening, but we we greeted our guest uh, with the request to uh, put down what amounts to a drop cloth. Ross, who's the producer behind Chuck, <laughs> is trying to make the audio as great as possible, Selena, because we have every expectation that every word out of your mouth is going to want to be captured in the highest possible fidelity to match the interest and the intellect that you bring to our humble broadcast. Then I better watch my Pittsburgh accent. <laughs> no, lean into it. You're capturing it all. Come on now, hon. You could you could talk you could be free here. You just talk the way you want to talk. What are you just talking about, Nat? <laughs> See, that's the thing. In Baltimore, it was use. Yeah. Y O U S D. You guys going to any ocean or yeah. what? In Pittsburgh, I noticed a long time ago it was more like Ewan's. It's Yins. Y I N Z, but we say Dan the same way. Yin's going down a beach. Yin's going down a river. Dan. Dan. Yeah. We're more we're more down. Down. Yeah. Like Al. Down. Yeah, down the ocean. Al, down the ocean. Yeah. 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 One time I went down the ocean with Chuck and we got so sick we threw up in his ink. Yeah. Oh my god, you could be a Yinzer. You we, could totally be a Yinzer. We had to wash all <laughs> our clothes. Poetry. <laughs> You know, I'd love your thoughts on what's going on with the infrastructure bill, your thoughts on how much fun our politicians are having with the language and what that means for Joe Blow from Idaho, who would just like to get down the road without falling into a pothole. Let me talk a little bit about how I approach reporting. Um, I don't I have been blessed throughout my career to never have an editor tell me go get this story. I want this story. <laughs> I have mm-hmm. always had editors who valued my intuition. And uh, I, I don't want to say fearlessness, because that seems like ego trip. But my willingness to just get in the car and go. So your curiosity, Selena, yeah. yeah, your curiosity. So I don't fly, not because I'm afraid of flying. But because if I'm going to go find the story, I don't want to fly over half the country and miss 13 other stories. And I don't take interstates. That's as bad as flying. You're just going past, you know, Chuck E. Cheese and a, and a gas station, but you're, you're, you're still not getting the story. You're just seeing the same little um, mirage or little island along, at, at, you know, every 17 miles. Uh, I only take U.S. routes or state routes. Only back roads. So why? Because if you're going to write a story about a a community or a town, you have to actually pass the counties and the towns along the way. Why? Well, because they tell you how these outer excerpts tell you if this area is doing good, doing great, if it's prosperous, or it's just on its knees. And that's part of the story is the journey to to wherever you're going. I also don't stay in hotels. I stay in bed and breakfast. Mm. Why? Because the first person I meet is a small business owner, and they know where all the bodies are buried. And, <laughs> but they have all the gossip, right? They belong to the little chambers of commerce or the little rotary clubs or those fraternal organizations that are so important to um, holding the fabric of communities together. And that's where that's where I always start. And that's how I've sort of always been. That's all I have always approached covering politics and culture. And, and I feel like everybody's grandma said this. <laughs> But my grandmother always said, and it was probably because I was little and yapping, you have two ears and one mouth. You should listen twice as much as you talk. Right. And I do that. I rarely say anything when I'm interviewing people. I just start asking questions. You take in the surroundings. You, you, you are respectful. And as long as you are respectful and curious, everyone's got a story. Everyone has a story, and everyone's story is compelling and unique to them, but also where they are and where they're from. And and that's what I take with me every time. Plus, you know, uh, my parents would beat me if I was not, (laughs) even even though though I'm in in my 60s. I I carry that responsibility of my parents being on one shoulder and my children and grandchildren on the other shoulder. So I will always be respectful to someone. 
Well, easier said because, and again, this is something that I was in the business maybe 20 years before Dirty Jobs became a thing. And at the heart of that show, it's really a, it's a talk show. And I said, well, you know, if, if we, if, if we imagine that we're access Hollywood and we treat a septic tank technician like he's Brad Pitt, then we're in the right direction. Yeah. You know, it's not just paying respect, it's paying attention. Yeah. And so you've interviewed so many people who yeah. are rooted in aggressive anonymity, yes. but you treat them as though you are sitting down with a world leader or a president. Which you've also and By the way, you've interviewed... Right. Yeah, have, you've like talked to every president, every presidential candidate since, yes. since what, 2000? Two, since 2000. Yeah, I'm much more comfortable talking with people and listening to people. And, and, technically, uh, they're I mean, people, Selena. <laughs> technically, technically, our past presidents have been part of H. Sapien, as far as I know. <laughs> A couple exceptions, perhaps. Um, 